fresh raspberry pie. Welcome to the show, guys. What are we doing? Well, this is uh, the moment that we have been building up to for a few uh, videos now, haven't we? We are booting up our Raspberry Pi for the first time. In my case, my monitor is a TV. I have uh, the Raspberry Pi plugged in to one of the HDMI ports. This TV only has two HDMI ports, so I typically have one Pi plugged into one and another Pi plugged into the other one. And you can actually see on my TV up there, uh, it says computer, and then next to that it says computer because it recognizes that that's what I am using those HDMI ports for. So this is what we're going to do. It's very, very simple from uh, this point on, guys. Uh, I have a power button on mine. If you have a button of some sort on yours, then you're just going to find that, that button on your power cord and hit the switch. And in my case, one uh, further step that I have to do is take my remote from my TV and I go over to one of the computers there and you see that first one that I that I uh, went over to, you see how it immediately started turning black and that tells me that Clearly, there's the Raspberry Pi. So I click on that, and we might have missed a little introductory screen there. I don't know what that was going to say, but this is the screen that you are initially greeted with when you are booting up your Raspberry Pi for the first time. It says, Welcome to the Raspberry Pi desktop. Before you start using it, there are a few things to set up. Press next to get started. Okay, if you have been following the series, then you know that I have shown you a few different ways to get to this point. Now, I want people who have little experience with this to be able to do this and to, you know, ease into this and not have not have issues. Therefore, I chose to go what I feel is the easiest way in setting this up. So that's not using the advanced options in the Raspberry Pi imager and that is not using the other method where we um, would be making an empty file or an empty folder called SSH and the WPA supplicant configuration file. That was one method and using the advanced options in the Raspberry Pi imager was another method. This is the easiest method. Using the Raspberry Pi imager to flash the operating system to the SD card plugging your SD card in, inserting your SD card into a Raspberry Pi, and turning your Raspberry Pi on. That's it. Okay, that's the easiest way to do it. But you obviously can only do it this way if you have a monitor to plug your Raspberry Pi into. If you don't and you have no other options but to connect to it via SSH, then you can go look at one of the other videos where I explain how you can connect to your Raspberry Pi that way. Since we are doing it this way, we have not configured any of these things in advance. So that's what we have to do now. Let me see if I can get some better light on this. I can see that there's a glare. And uh, we're just going to click Next. And once again, I can, I can very clearly see as I'm looking at the camera recording this that there is like a, a little glare and therefore you probably can't see what it says on that box. Um, so maybe I'll put that in in the corner as I edit this so that you can see that. <clears throat> what it is saying is, Welcome to the Raspberry Pi. Set your country. Enter the details of your location. This is used to set the language, time zone, keyboard, and other international settings. It's saying United Kingdom and it's saying British English for the language and London for the time zone. Uh, that's what it says default if you have not done done any changes yet. As you know, I'm in the United States. I'll be clicking on the United States. You click on whatever country you are in. You have your different languages, American English, Cherokee, Spanish, Yiddish. Um, I'll be clicking on American English. Time zone. And y this is important that you do this stuff. It does matter. It really does. You want to get what is closest to you as you communicate with other devices possibly other devices on your network, other Raspberry Pis. This stuff needs to be in accord. So I'm going to click New York because that is the time zone that I am in. And then it says 
use English language and use keyboard, uh, use US keyboard. And I'm gonna click on both of those two. Press next when you've made your selection. And now it is saying that it's setting location. Please wait. That was quick. All right, next part. Change password. The default Pi user account currently has the password Raspberry. It is strongly recommended that you change this to a different password that only you know, okay? This is a very, very important part of this. This stuff will be erased when I'm done with the YouTube series. So that's why I don't care putting something stupid in. But put in a, a good password. Don't reuse your password. This is very important. And there are literally things that are called Raspberry Pi hunters. And they will look for these devices. And when they find them, they will attempt to access them using the default credentials. Using what they know would be the default credentials if you did not change them. So it's going to try to log in as Pi. It's going to try to use Raspberry for for the password, you know, and, and all of these things. Okay, so we want to change these things. This is this is a very important step. I'm going to put in my new password. Go ahead and put in yours. My password for the sake of this is going to be, you guys can guess it, password. Okay, confirm. So I'm going to confirm, typing in the same thing. Press next. Set up screen. The desktop should fill the entire screen. Tick the box below if your screen has a black border at the edges. This screen shows a black border around the desktop. Uh, actually, my screen does show a little black edge. So I'm going to click on it and I'm going to press next. I can't remember how this works if I have to wait until the next time that I boot it, when I reboot it, if the change takes effect. I guess we'll find out. All right, the next step is to select the Wi-Fi network. Um, I obviously am going to have to blur this out or just make sure that it, it can't be seen because I can't, I can't have you see in my network. Quite frankly, I don't want anybody out there to be able to see any of the networks that are around me for privacy reasons. I am going to connect to, to my network, but I'm not going to tell you what that is. Not something you want the world to be knowing. All right, so once you find your network in that list, go ahead and click next. And now this next step, this is gonna be the step that takes the longest amount of time. So get ready to be sitting sitting around for a little while waiting on this to finish so you might want to go find something else to do for a little while it could take upwards of 30 minutes or so the operating system and applications will now be checked and updated if necessary they will need to be updated and as it says this may involve a large download so i'm gonna go ahead and press next on that now it's uh, saying that it's checking for updates it's reading an update list please wait etc so like i said this is the part that takes the longest. It can take upwards of, of 30, 30 minutes, depending on how big of a gap in time there is between uh, the, the uh, version that you actually have and what is the latest version to, to come out. I'm obviously not going to continue to record while it does this. Um, I think at, at this point, we could probably end this video and pick up on the next part of this. All right, everyone. Thank you for watching. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and come back and get you another piece of this pie.